Welcome to HSC Economics Made Easy. This video marks the beginning of a new topic, the global economy. Today I'll be focusing on the impacts of trade liberalization or free trade. In the syllabus, this is part of topic one. While most schools may choose to start the year 12 course with this topic, many other schools actually choose to do this at the end of the course. The advantage of doing topic one at the end of the course is that it enables us to incorporate concepts from topics two, three, and four as we study it. The ability to draw from multiple topics is very important in the HSC course. For example, take a look at this HSC extended response from 2018. It requires us to be able to draw the link from free trade, which is in topic one, and employment and income distribution, which is in topic three, as well as external stability, which is heavily based in topic two. This is why I recommend that you watch my videos from those topics before you watch this series. To unpack the impacts of free trade in greater depth, I'm going to be using concepts from those previous topics. This includes topics such as balance of payments, employment, income distribution, aggregate demand, aggregate supply, the different types of efficiencies, and so on. It'll be good if you have prior understanding of these topics. All right, without further ado, let's get into it. What are the impacts of free trade on our economy? Free trade leads to two main impacts, greater foreign competition from imports and greater access to foreign markets for exporters. Greater foreign competition usually comes with a short-term cost to domestic businesses, as inefficient businesses can't compete, lose market share, and decline. This leads to a loss of jobs and structural unemployment in the short term. This could also lead to income inequality, as it is usually those in inefficient industries with low skills and already low wages who lose their jobs. Efficient industries can grow even larger, as they access global markets, further widening the wage gap. Let's look at some examples. There have been many industries and jobs lost in Australia over the years as foreign competition increased. Manufacturing is an industry in Australia that has declined over the years. One of the most notable examples in recent years is the car manufacturing industry, which failed to compete against other economies with lower labour costs. Another more specific example that I like to refer to is when foreign competition came to Australia in the form of ride-sharing apps like Uber. This caused loss of revenue and jobs in the taxi industry. However, this is not the end of the story. Greater foreign competition has its long-term ongoing benefits as well. For households, it means greater consumer choice and lower prices, and this leads to improved standards of living. Domestic businesses could also source cheaper imported inputs, leading to lower cost of production and lower prices. With lower cost push inflation comes greater technical efficiency and aggregate supply in the long term. This also means greater international competitiveness, which leads to export growth. With this comes greater economic activity and lower unemployment. On the balance of payments, greater export revenue could lead to an improvement in the box account. There are also more benefits when we look at the other main impact of free trade. Domestic businesses may face more foreign competition, but they are also able to gain more export revenue as they access foreign markets. As these domestic industries grow and hire a larger workforce, they will eventually absorb the structural unemployment from the inefficient industries. This shift of workers from inefficient to efficient industries is called allocative efficiency. As these efficient exporting industries increase in size, they will also achieve economies of scale. This again leads to technical efficiency and all the benefits that follow. Referring back to my examples of declining industries, let's look at what happened since car manufacturing declined. As you can see in this chart, manufacturing had been declining over time, but subsequently we have seen employment growth in construction and services. These are the efficient industries that reflect what consumers and export markets actually want. And this shift is allocative efficiency. As for the Uber example, prices are quite high when it first started in Australia. But as more drivers shifted from taxis to ride sharing, the supply of drivers met the demand. Prices started to drop. Now passengers get to enjoy greater convenience at lower prices from a range of ride sharing providers compared to when it was just taxis. And these are just the benefits from a single nation's perspective. From a global perspective, free trade means that instead of each nation having to produce everything to meet their own needs, they can each focus on just a few things that they're good at and then trade. This allows every nation to specialize in producing the goods where they have a comparative advantage, which is where they have the lowest opportunity cost. And from a global perspective, this is efficient resource use, leading to improved standards of living for all as a result of free trade. As you can see, trade liberalization can have some short-term costs, such as declining inefficient industries and structural unemployment in the short term. However, there is a multitude of benefits in the long term. This includes improved efficiency in the domestic and global economy, as well as overall improvements in standards of living. These benefits make up the rationale for the movement towards free trade. In my next video, I'm going to look at the flip side and look at the arguments for and against protectionist policies. Make sure you subscribe to the channel as well as follow us on Facebook to make sure you don't miss that. 
If this video has helped you, please leave a like and comment as well as share the video too. And I look forward to continuing to make HSA economics easy for you. See you next time.